With how good amp sims are these days, is it still relevant or worth your time to try recording your amp? For me, I do still think it's worth it to put a microphone in front of a guitar amp and hit record. And I'm gonna share some tips for you on how to get successful results in your home studio. All right, so here's some benefits to recording a guitar amp with a mic. The first is that it's more authentic. This sounds so authentic. Now that's not to say that amp simulations don't sound great, because they do. However, they can also yield wildly different results depending on your playing style and your guitar. And sometimes you can run into latency issues that can throw off your performance. But if you play out live with an amp, you know how to dial it in, you know how it responds to your playing, and it's just gonna yield a better performance from you. And that's gonna result in a more authentic recording at the end of the day. Another benefit is the principle of less is more. With guitar amp sims, you can get access to every single amp and guitar effect pedal under the sun, and that's not necessarily a good thing. By limiting your options and working with what you already have and what you already know, you can focus more on the performance and creative aspects of recording rather than endlessly tweaking and scrolling through presets. All right, another reason is that it forces you to commit. An important principle of recording is to get it right at the source and to commit to sounds on the way in. So you don't wanna leave all of this decision-making for the mixing stage. If you decide early on how you want your guitar tone to sound, it's gonna result in a more cohesive production because you know as you're building the song how each instrument will respond to the other and how they're gonna to live together in the mix. Another benefit is you're recording your unique tone, which no one has a plug-in emulation of. In this day and age, everyone has access to the same software emulations and it can lead to things starting to sound the same. This is an easy way that you can get a unique tone that is completely your own. All right, the last benefit is that it's just more fun. Why spend all afternoon tweaking virtual knobs and mic placements when you can actually do it for real? I think this is a much more fun and inspiring way to work personally. All right, so let's talk about how to get a great guitar tone. So first, let's look at the signal chain. So you have your guitar, then you have effect pedals, potentially, your guitar amp, then you're capturing that with a microphone, which is going into an audio interface, and then ultimately being recorded to your computer. So with that signal chain in mind, I'm gonna share some different tips. All right, so the first part of the signal chain is your guitar. And the only tip I really have to give you is please tune your guitar. Otherwise, you're just gonna sound sloppy and out of place. Doesn't matter how well you play. Yeah. And make sure it's intonated while you're at it. All right, so with guitar pedals, one of the issues you might run into is noise. Hiss and hum, and it can quickly get out of hand with long pedal chains. So one way to minimize that is use quality patch cables and use an isolated power supply. Another tip is to be careful with time-based effects like delay and reverb. Knock it off, slow Mobius! Oh, sorry, dude! It's really easy to misjudge how much you need when you're recording yourself. So make sure to record a sample and listen back on your studio monitors so that you can get a realistic picture of how much you want in your signal in context. Sometimes you can get great results by waiting on things like delay and reverb until the mixing stage and using plugins. That way you can get stereo delays and stereo reverbs that have a sense of dimension to them that you might not get from guitar pedals. All right, so now I'm gonna play a sound sample with delay and reverb pedals, and then with delay and reverb plugins added after the fact so that you can hear the differences between them, both the stereo image and the level of clarity. All right, the next piece of the chain is the guitar amp. And if you're recording in a home studio situation, small amps are your friend. 
10 or 12 inch speaker combos are gonna be ideal because you can push them a bit harder at more conservative volumes. The next tip is to get your amp off of the floor. I like to put my amp on a stool or an amp stand so that I'm not getting any reflections from the floor in my recording and so that I can make mic positioning just a little bit easier with a full size boom stand. And if you have a master volume knob, it makes it even easier to get a great tone. Try pushing the gain a little bit and bringing back the master volume to get some natural amp breakup. This can be a great subtle saturation effect or as full on overdrive. So here's an example of using that technique to get subtle saturation on a clean tone and then using it to get full on overdrive. All right, so let's talk about choosing a microphone. The first and most obvious choice is going to be a dynamic microphone like the MTP440DM that I have here. These kind of microphones have a unique tonal characteristic that's familiar and emphasizes the mid-range, which sounds great for electric guitar. These are a really common choice that you'll see whether using them live or in the studio. So you can't really go wrong here. And then you have condenser microphones like the LCT440 Pure. These sound really great and are full fidelity, so you get more low end and more high end clarity. They sound especially great for clean guitar tones and give you a little bit of a smoother, less aggressive mid range sound. One thing to watch out for is with high gain tones, sometimes they capture more of the fizziness of the guitar tone but this can usually easily be remedied with EQ after the fact. And then you have ribbon microphones. This one is actually one that I built from a DIY kit by Bumblebee Pro Audio, and it sounds really good and really interesting on electric guitar. It gives you a very warm and mellow tone, which can sound great by itself, but also can sound really cool when paired with brighter microphones. All right, so let's talk about polar patterns and how they affect recording a guitar amp. So an omnidirectional pattern is gonna give you the least proximity effect. So you're gonna get less bass boost even when you're right up on the speaker of the amp. It's also gonna pick up all around it. So you're gonna get more of the natural room ambience. A figure eight pattern microphone is gonna give you the most proximity effect. So you can get a significant bass boost when you're close miking a guitar amp. It also is gonna pick up a little bit more of the room, but a little bit less so than the omnidirectional. If you're using a ribbon microphone, those are often figure eight pattern mics. And finally, a cardioid pattern is gonna be the most common type that you'll run into. And this is just gonna give you a very direct present tone that has a little bit of proximity effect at close range and rejects everything behind it really, really well. So I'm gonna do a quick shootout of cardioid versus omni versus figure eight polar patterns. Listen to the tonal characteristics as they change between the different patterns and also listen to the amount of room ambience that you hear in the recording. Let's talk about mic placement. Mic placement can have a huge impact on the guitar tone that you end up recording. Where you put the mic in relation to the speaker massively changes the frequency response that you get. The first common mic technique is the center placement. And it's just what it sounds like. It's putting the microphone directly in the center of the speaker. It's helpful to use a flashlight to see through the grill cloth to make sure that you're actually in the middle of the speaker because sometimes it can be a little bit off center in the cabinet. This position gives you the brightest and most present tone. 
which can sometimes be harsh depending on the guitar and the amp and how you dial it in. All right, another technique is to put the microphone off center from the speaker, and that way you get a little bit more low end and mid range, but you do lose some of that brightness of your guitar tone. So here's a quick sound example of how the center position sounds versus more towards the edge of the speaker. Another factor that changes the tone is your distance from the speaker. If you're closer to the speaker, you're typically going to get more low end, and if you're farther away, you're going to get less. You'll also start to pick up more of the room. So here's an example of a close mic'd guitar amp versus the mic being about 12 inches away from the grill cloth. Another variable that can change your guitar tone is whether you're placing the microphone on axis or off axis. On axis is where you have it pointed straight at the guitar amp, and this gives you a very bright present tone with a ton of clarity. Off axis is when you have the microphone pointed at an angle towards the speaker. So a common way to set this up is right at the edge of the speaker, pointed at a 45 degree angle towards the center of the speaker. And this can help tame some harshness if you have an overly bright tone. And it can also provide some unique mid-range character to your sound. So here's a quick shootout of how those two different placements sound. Listen carefully to what's happening in the mid-range. You're gonna get a big difference in brightness. All right, so now I wanna talk about setting the gain on your interface. You've done a lot of work to this point to get a great guitar tone, so don't ruin it at this stage. Make sure to leave yourself plenty of headroom so that you don't accidentally clip, especially if you're using a cleaner guitar tone because this tends to have a wider dynamic range. All right, another bonus tip is you can still record DI even if you're recording your amp. Just put this in line before your pedal board and then you have a backup recording of your clean direct guitar tone. This can be a great backup option if you need to reamp or rebuild your guitar tone later. If something maybe went wrong while recording your amp that you didn't catch until the mixing stage. Recording an electric guitar amp with a microphone is a great way to get a sound that is completely your own. Hopefully these tips help you get some great results in your own home studio. Let us know down in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more content like this.